headed home from the Chris Paul one-on-one, -on -one, me and him. So I just lost fellow North Carolinian, all-star Chris Paul. Yeah. Got me good. Got me with a half-court shot, two yeah. out of three. My man, let me help you out today. Spend that on food. You okay? Yeah. You all right? All right, hang in there, my friend. I appreciate it. I'll send you a shirt. I don't know if you want this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm carving one, so I'm Do you wear a new pair every game? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Are these those PE, like, player exclusive ones? Yeah. You know exactly what's know. going on. Because I get a lot of, like, sneakerheads following me, so they're always like, you need to get the Chris Paul PE. So yeah, now I got them. Thank the you. I had on, we just played, and I had them on last night. Yeah, but I learned a lot, you know. One of the things I learned from Chris Paul, every time I've been around him, he's a nice guy, man. And, you know, people always say, you got to be ruthless to be at the top. And he knows how to be ruthless when he's playing a game and he's competitive. I saw that when I was playing him, when I started to do all right. He came at me pretty hard, but all in, you know, good spirit and stuff. So, but he's a polite person. He makes you feel good. And that's a real skill as you work on your social skills so you can win friends, influence people, network better. You know, you got to make people, there's that old cliche, which is so true that says, uh, people don't remember what you did. They remember how you made them feel. They don't remember what you said. They remember how you made them feel. So humans are emotional creatures. And uh, I was just reminded of Chris Paul. You know, obviously, he's he's one of the great basketball players alive right now. And uh, he made me, you know, feel welcome. And uh, that's a real skill you want to cultivate in yourself is that ability to be able to be in the moment with people, to make people feel like, you know, you're there for them, that you care that they're there. Can't tell you how many times in social settings, and maybe you made this mistake I have, where you like get distracted, you're ADD, but Chris Paul was there the whole time, never checked his phone, didn't text, wasn't talking to anybody else, was just there right there with me. And uh, that's something you wanna cultivate in yourself is that ability to really be present in the moment there's that famous book the power of now by Eckhart Tolle and uh, he's big on that and we live in a world now where if you're not careful man your brain will be all over the place so focus down be, be present when you need to be present there's a time to daydream don't get me wrong that's where I come up with great ideas for myself business you know you gotta you gotta have a dreamer but you have to be able to I call that modulation. You gotta oscillate, modulate, move, and alternate between different uh, moods, modalities of behavior, and so on. And so, it's always a great lesson. I love, you know, one of the things I was talking about in that video I did, heaven and hell on earth. Well, heaven on earth, to me, like I said, I don't know what happens after we die. I leave that for the spiritual experts, but I do know there is a hell and a heaven on earth that we create by the habits of our mind. And so, Chris Paul, you can tell he's got good habits of the mind, you know? You were saying uh, never quit on a miss. You think that's just no. psychological? Could be, could be. I just never never end on a miss. Never leave practice on a miss. Yeah. He enjoys his life, enjoys his family. I've been around his mom, dad. It's not, they're all, you know, in a good relationship. He's making, you know, he's a multi, multi-millionaire plays on a top team he's uh he's winning at life you know and and you can see that stuck in a little la traffic here you can see that he uh has that ability to create heaven on earth just by the focus that he has and it's really about focus life's about focus if you're not focused where are you you know what i mean <laughs> I can tell you where you're going to be. You're going to be, they call it dissipation. You're going to be dissipated. And dissipated people lose in life. So, I highly recommend you not be dissipated. Not at all. So, yeah, that was fun. Always also a little lesson to myself. Find your sport that you like. For me, it's basketball. That's what I grew up with. 
I like jujitsu and I like Muay Thai and boxing. Some guys who like fast cars filming me. <laughs> um, but you know, pick up a sport that you haven't played. Maybe you played when you were younger. You gave up on it. Don't give up on stuff. One thing that I also learned in myself, you know, I, I, obviously I didn't win, but I'm able to hang in there with a pro guy. We lose, we give 10,000 to your charity. Are you serious? Yeah. I was gonna just make you sign your shoes and you start. H-O-R-S in horse, because I never gave up on my sport. And I did for some years, and I always regretted it. Now, now I don't, you know, I don't like regret. Joe Schilling, my Muay Thai teacher, who's two-time world Muay Thai champion, three-time middleweight world champion in kickboxing. He told me he would rather go to home saying, man, I wish I hadn't done that, than, man, I wish I would have done that. There's a big difference between, man, I wish I would have done it, and man, I'm not sure I should have done that. There's that old saying, better to ask uh, forgiveness than permission. <laughs> so, when you give up on something that you used to love, for the most part, you give up on it not because you don't love it anymore, give up on it because life gets busy. We've all been there. Uh, we get a little jaded. Some trauma happens and so we give up. We don't push through it. Don't do that. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you like. Do it till the day you die. And then you'll be able to say, I don't have regret of omission. Better to have regrets of commission of things you did than regrets of omission. Omission's not good. Now, there are some things you want to regret by omission, like you know, <laughs> punching an old lady in the face. You don't want to do that. You, that's something you can leave out, but I'm talking within the boundaries of common sense. Like a sport. You used to love jogging. You used to love boxing. You used to love basketball. You used to love soccer. You got to ask yourself, why are you not playing? And if the only reason is because you're older, that's not a good reason. That means you're giving up on life. That means you're falling for the old throw, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What's called resignation is confirmed desperation. That just means you're confirming your desperation by saying, oh, got a little older. Well, you know what keeps you young? Movement. You see, Chris Paul's in good shape, boy. I'll tell you that right now. He's in great shape. He's lean. We've got enough muscle on him so he's not skinny. Um, he's got that coordination. You know, he's a real basketball player. And you and I are not going to be pro pro athletes, probably. Maybe you will be. I don't know your situation. Some crazy thing there. Cocktails with Khloe Kardashian. That's kind of a crazy. Uh, anyway, um, so my recommendation for you is number one, focus. Oh, this lady just coming out. See, look at this lady. She's not so good at the focus situation. <laughs> About to crash into cars everywhere. Number one, focus. And number two, practical tip. Revive whatever thing you gave up for no good reason. Now, if you gave it up for a good reason, then you can always be logical. But if the only reason, like I said, is older or you stop finding time for it, that's BS. That's right. Confirm desperation. Don't, don't try to hide it as, oh, resign yourself to like, oh, well, I did that a long time ago. That, that goes back to being present. If you're present right now, you're not thinking about whether you're older or younger. You're just present. The past is a, is a mist, like the mist in the morning that disappears. It's not really real, you know. It's kind of there, but it's like fog. And so what's really here is you right now. And... The second you start putting your brain at that place where you're thinking about, um, oh, well, I used to do that. You, what is used to? You know, some things, like I said, you have to give up for varying reasons. It's understandable. Life gets busy. You're not gonna have the same amount of time as an adult as you had when you were five years old when you didn't have any responsibilities. But for the most part, it becomes, trust me, it becomes an excuse with no justification. Because if you think about it, you have 
24 hours a day, you sleep eight, that's 16. Even if you work eight or 10, that's still six. You only spend three hours with your kids and one hour working out and one hour doing nothing, you still have one hour. You only gotta play a sport. You play like seven minutes enough. Scientists have found that even seven minutes of something, whether it be jogging or sprinting, if you used to like basketball, put a hoop up in the garage, go shoot, for set the timer for seven minutes. Trust me, it's cumulative. It starts to add up in a positive way in your life. And then you get transformation. And that's, I'm all about this thing I call the new you. The new you is, like I say, it's, it's a play on words because the new you is usually the old you <laughs> before life and society held you back, before trauma uh, scarred your brain up and caused you to think irrationally and illogically and become fear-based and become procrastinator. So the second you uh, start incrementally, like I said, for some of you, it's seven minutes a day practicing focus. Seven minutes a day picking up an old sport. And you do that every day, it starts to add up. It's like Charlie Munger says, go to bed a little wiser than you were the day before. Step by step, you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. One thing Chris Paul told me that was interesting. He said, you know, Ty, uh, I, uh, sometimes people play me and they're like, man, this dude doesn't miss. And he goes, that's because it's my, it's my job. I'm a pro basketball player. This is my job, you know? And, uh, so the way when we watch sports, you all right? Yeah, I just hit my head when, um, okay, yeah. um, when you play, the reason we don't incrementally keep active or keep focused or play chess or read a book or all those things that you know you should do and you really want to do, it's because you look at people who are better than you and go, oh, I can never be like them if I only do seven minutes a day. Well, it's their job. You don't have to be as good as them. I read a book a day. That's kind of what I do. You don't have to read a book a day. It'd be smart to do, but you don't have to. So what you do is just set the timer for incremental. I'm actually working on a new program. By the time you watch this video, it might be out. I'm not sure. I've been, been working on it. And uh, it's all about that incremental new view. And then the beauty. I saw that in Chris Paul's countenance, his eyes, his face, his mood, his expressions. This is a dude. He's living life the right way. Now, he's a man. He's a human being. So that means I don't look at him and thinking he has no flaws. If I hung out with any human for a prolonged period of time, you're going to find something weird about him. Same with me. I'm not all good. I got my dark side. So do you. Like Mark Twain said, all humans are like the moon. They have the light side and the dark side. But my point being, I don't judge people whether they're they're deities, whether they're uh, infallible. What I look for is the general vibe that I get from them. And the vibe you get from Chris Paul, this dude's doing it right. And I have this little test I've talked about, you might have heard, which is a very powerful test you can try on yourself. It's called the exchange or the trade test. And it's when you meet somebody that you admire, you go, would I trade for his life? And, uh, or her life. And then you've got to ask yourself the flip side. Would they trade for yours? And if the answer is you trade for theirs, but you're sure they wouldn't trade for you, that's when you got to give yourself a check in life. as a gut check to go, what am I doing wrong that I'm sure I want to be like them, but they don't want to be like me. Now, some people are delusional with this test. Woo, a little bumpy. But some people are very delusional. But... Uh, I hope that's not you because some people go oh I love myself no my, now forget that real talk here look down honestly with yourself there's no improvement without honesty with yourself come on you don't have to tell the world this you can just think it in your head but when I see Chris Paul I now I'll tell you it's interesting over the years um, there's not that many people that I meet that I would trade for their life Chris Paul is one I would consider pro basketball player he got a good life all around um, and I don't know if he would trade for mine probably not but I at least know that he 
has some respect for me and maybe some part of my life he would trade so that lets me know that I'm you know maybe on the right track but I gotta even get better so that I could answer that absolutely we would both trade for each other's lives and by the way in terms of the people you should be hanging out with in life you want to hang out with the people in life that you absolutely would trade for their life and they would trade for yours because or else you create a mismatch situation where you're hanging out with somebody who you know you don't want to be like them that's not good you got to have something you admire in everybody that's around you or else you're hanging out with two low level people they don't have to it's not about how much money they make or you know it, it's not about whether they're perfect it's basically about or is there some part you admire and vice versa that they admire in you and that's another lesson I learned today you know playing horse playing with some one-on-one -on -one against Chris Ball it's very interesting that he uh, he has that that thing that that like hard to describe X factor that makes me go yeah I would trade for this dude's life this guy's got a cool life now, I don't know if I would trade but I'm just saying it's in the running. It's in consideration. So, I'm going to close up here. Almost home. Hope sweet home. For you, what are the things? Leave a comment. What's one simple thing that, from this game that I played with Chris Paul, what can you learn? What can you apply from Chris Paul to your life? Is it the focus? And how are you going to focus more? Is it picking up an old sport? What old sport are you going to pick? How much time are you going to spend a day? Is it uh, knowing how to network better and make people feel good when you're around them? Um, or is it that trade factor? Leave a little comment below. And, uh, yeah. Bye-bye.